All right, you're here, Robert Chambers from AnyKeyMusic.com, teaching you how to master the art of playing piano by ear. And we're going to be talking about the G7 chord. Hi, I recently did a post saying that in a warning to all the traditional music theory teachers out there that the G7 is incorrect. Now, the actual chord is not a bad chord, it's not wrong, but the actual naming of the chord is incorrect. And I wanted to hear from a lot of you that are out there, and um, so I'm actually providing my answer to this. Now, I might be the only person in the world that is saying that it's the naming of this chord is incorrect, but um, <laughs> uh, I guess we'll see after my explanation, we'll see if you disagree with my explanation. All right, so we're talking about the G7 chord. Now, this G7 chord is used all over the place. It's used in traditional gospel music. music there it is right here let's reharmonize it and roll G7. the G7 can be used all over the place. Now I'm using G7 as an example, but that applies to all dominant chords, whether it's C7, B flat 7, all dominant chords. I'm just using G7 for the sake of my example, just to show where is the error or where is the error of uh, the G or the naming of the G7 chord. Now, as you know, it's usually taught that in the G7, you have the one, the three, the five, and the flat seven. Now, I'm assuming that uh, you are an advanced player for this particular example. Um, if you don't know what the numbers and all those things are, then um, I, <laughs> I think you should get started on the NET Music System because we all just focusing on numbers. But right now, I'm just speaking to as uh, with an understanding that you actually understand the, the numbers and so forth. So traditionally, it's thought that you have the one, the three, the five, and the flat seven that's in it. Now. Theoretically, that is correct. In the key of G, that would be the 1, 3, 5, and the flat 7. But why it is incorrect in terms of the naming is because simply this. Now, I grew up playing by ear. I didn't take any lessons. But when I learned the names of the chords at age 20, um, and um, they were told me, okay, this is the name. It's the G7. It's if, I'm like, 
I was just so excited because I finally had a name. I didn't know how to explain this method. I didn't know how to explain music and playing by ear to actually people because I didn't know the names of the chords. I couldn't say just do this or it's just this. So when I learned the name, I was just like, great, you know. So I accepted it because it, it had it made sense, right? So they told me, yeah, whenever it doesn't, if it doesn't say major seven, it always means that the seven is flat seven. Now I grew up. I grew up, um, you know, one of seven uh, brothers and sisters, and I have my father, Jamaican background, and born um, here in Canada. And my father, um, he didn't argue much. So if he told you not to do something, you you just don't do it. And if you ask him, I was a person to ask why, why does why, Dad, why do I have to do that? He said, because I said so. <laughs> so when Dad said, because I said so, you couldn't contest him, no matter what you say, because he said so. So. At sometimes that worked for me. Um, I would receive it, but sometimes I'd, I'd um, challenge him on that. Well, I don't want to do this because you don't tell me why, and I would get the repercussions if you know what I mean. <laughs> for those of you that had Jamaican uh, upbringing and so forth, um, the rod was not spared. If you understand what I mean. So basically, the I said so because I said so doesn't really work for me, and I apply that always to music. I need to have an explanation. So when I would ask him, just why? Why is this the reason why the seven is flattened, or you know the one three and a flat seven? I would just be told, well, you know that's just the way it is. You just got to remember. But I'm like, okay, I know it's the uh, the one three five. So here's my argument: why I think that the naming of this chord is is in, uh, incorrect. For example, you have the G seven. You have it. No, has the one three and five and flat seven. If G was the one in there, correct? That's what is taught, right? Now, what if we had the G major seven? It's usually taught that what what is in it? There's taught that it's the one, three, the five, and the major sevens in it, right? You following what I mean? Okay. So and so I was taught that, or I, I wasn't taught. I was told that because it says major seven, that automatically means that the seventh is a seventh note in the major scale. Now, those of you that know the Indian music system and how I teach, basically, I like to keep things very simple. All right, and I wasn't going to actually even challenge this particular method, but because I see that it's actually a, a, a stumbling block to actually allowing the masses to be able to play piano by ear, I decided to actually review, just to expose and to explain the real reason. Now, I didn't speak with the person that came up with this name, but I'm pretty sure whoever came up with the name, what they really meant, and I'm going to show you this. Okay, so that's what we were told. The G major 7 had the 1, 3, the 5, and the major 7 in Okay. That's great. That makes sense to me. Okay. Now, if we look at the G minor seven chord. Now, when we have a minor chord, automatically it's told and it's taught that the minor means that the third is flattened. I said that's great. <laughs> that's great because that makes sense. You th you you uh, flatten the third, and you get a minor chord. So a minor seven would have G, B flat, D, and it would also have the F as a minor seven. So once again, I'm like, okay. The one, the flat three, makes sense because it's minor. The five, because it's part of that G chord. And then the, when it says the seven, um, I like to keep things simple. So when I do a simple major scale, when I say seven, to me, that's the seventh note of the scale. If we have G, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. To me, that makes complete sense sense. So I don't like to make it more complicated. Now we say minor seven. So automatically I got to say to myself, I got to subtract the third, all right? Oh, sorry, make the third flatten, which is a minor. That makes sense. And then the seven, because I don't say major, I automatically have to tell myself it's flat seven. I'm going to tell you why that, even though I'm talking about the G7, you're going to see that the C minor seven, the naming of it is incorrect. Now we do know it does have the one, the flat three to five and the flat seven, if we were looking at it in the key of G, but that's not how we got that chord. I'm going to prove my point. Stay tuned. You're going to really like this. Let's look at another chord. Let's look at the G9. So G9. What's in a G9 chord? What's in a G9 chord? Okay, I'll give you a quick second. Five, four, three, two, one. Those are the numbers in the G9 chord. But let's look at it. The G9, we have our major scale. We have our one, two, in the key of G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is just an octave higher. And we have our nine, correct? Yes. We have our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then our nine, which we know the nine is just simply the two played one octave higher. So the notes to get the chord for the G9, you'd have, this is how it's taught, which is true in the key of G. You have the one, the three, the five and the flat seven, right? And then the nine. So you have G nine. 
Now, here's my argument. Why, is, why isn't the 9 flattened? When you see a 9, why do you not flatten it? Here's another part of my argument. Why do you not sharpen the 9? Okay, well, the traditional theory that is out there is because you didn't say to flatten it. And you didn't say to sharpen it. So therefore, you keep it as a regular 9. That's the first part of my argument. So what is so special about the 7? Why automatically this new rule pops up to the 7 that the 7 is not supposed to be flattened? What is telling us? Now, if you were to say to me, if you were to say to me that it's because the 7 is, you know, God created the heaven and the earth, which I truly believe, and that the 7th day he rested, so because he rested it has special privileges on the 7th day, then I'll say okay, I'll accept that. But if that's not your reasoning behind it, what is telling us to flatten the 7? Nothing's telling us to flatten the 7. So therefore, we shouldn't be flattening the seven. Now, we know we flatten the seven, but what I'm saying is in the traditional name, that would not be correct. So when you see G9, automatically, you know, you're supposed to tell yourself, okay, because it's not saying major, that you shouldn't put the seven. Now, I like to keep things simple. When I ask someone, play me the one in the key of G, I want the one. When I ask someone to play the four in the key of G, I want the four. When I ask someone to play the six in the key of G, I ask, I want the six. When I want someone to play the two in the key of G, I want the two. Okay, when I'm saying seven, I am not talking about my flat seven. And the reason why I do this is because some environments they go to, I say to play the seven, and automatically people are playing the flat seven. I said, I didn't say the flat seven, I said the seven. If you played a regular major scale, what would be the seventh note? It would, in the key of G, it'd be exactly. You know what it is. It should be, it should be F sharp, exactly. So now let me get back to my point of the G7, G9. Now, there's a chord, believe it or not, and those of you that are advanced musicians, you know that there's this chord. Right? That chord is known as a G9, sorry, it's a G7 flat 9. Now, once again, I played this chord all the time, and when I went to uh, study a little bit of uh, jazz, um, which was <laughs> something to get into that course where you have to read music, and I didn't read music, it was uh, kind of interesting. I got in on just, just raw ability and understanding of music. But um, you have a G7 flat 9, okay? G7 flat 9. So, once again, there's my argument. What is so special about that 9? Like that 9, if it was supposed to flatten from before, I mean, it just said 9, why didn't, we, why, why didn't we flatten it? Because nothing told us to flatten it. So if you have G7 flat 9, why would you flatten the 9? Because, very simple, it says flat 9. Doesn't that make so much sense? Okay, so what is so special about the 7 that nobody has to tell the 7 to flatten and we're supposed to know that automatically? Let me give you another example. Let's look at G7. Let's look at G7 sharp 9. Did you know that there's a chord like that? G7 sharp 9. So if you have a, uh, a particular, um, let's say, uh, I'll show you an application. So let's say if you were here, you can use G7 G7 flat, uh, sharp 9 right there. Now I learned the names after. Right? Okay, so there's your G7 sharp 9. Now, how do you know to sharpen the 9th? Very easy, because the name said to sharpen the 9th. So what is so special about the 7 that you don't have to tell it to, to move? Somebody explain that to me. Now, obviously, um, you're not going to be able to interact with me because we're not talking live. But that's exactly my point. So that's why I say the naming of that chord is incorrect. Now, I'm going to show you the real reason why it was called G7. Okay? It's going to blow your mind how simple this is. Now, i got to also let you know that if you start seeing other people starting to teach it this way, you know that this is the first place where you st you saw it. So I'm just release, uh, revealing some of the methods that are used in the Anki Music System in terms of how to understand and uh, play music, okay? So let me break it down for you so you can actually see, okay?